Hello, and welcome to Neurosynchrony, building a conscious connection to your intuition. How do we access intuition? Through an intuitive sense that has 19 facets. Are you old enough to remember the mystery that was attributed to ESP? I remember television specials that focused on the select few who were intuitive. They could predict the future and commune with spirits not on this plane. Psychics were few in number and had that magical sixth sense that gave clarity. They might be clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, or a number of other clairs. Those who had ESP saw and understood the world through second sight. Now, I've come to realize that we're all intuitive. Each of us, to some degree, possesses a clair, or an inability to use our intuition to gain clarity. Whether that is sight, hearing, feeling or sensing something, or just something totally different, we are all intuitive, we are all intuitive antennas gathering information with our intuitive sense. This intuitive sense is not a magical sixth sense. No, it's a sense comprised of 19 facets or ways that we gather intuition. You are probably familiar with five of those. There are primary senses of sight, hearing, tasting, smelling, and, scent, and touch. The 14 senses are what I call nesting senses. So think of Russian nesting dolls, how you have a doll and a doll and a doll. Well, those 14 senses nest within the five primary senses much like that. I'm not going to talk about all 14 of the senses right now. We, it would be an hour or more lo or longer. But I'm going to give you some examples of what those 14 senses may are. The first one I want to talk about is, is called proximal. So what I will ask you is, have you ever had your back to a door didn't hear anyone come in, but you felt their presence. Maybe you had a shiver go down your spine, or you felt a warmth. Something was saying to you, someone is there with you. I call our proximal sense an early warning system. So sometimes our bodies tell us that something's wrong, that there might be something nearby that we need to pay attention to, even when we cannot visibly see or hear something. When we get that alert, that is our intuition speaking. The next sense I want to talk about is eidetic imagery. This has also been called a photographic memory. Have you ever tried to find objects in a hidden picture? Maybe you couldn't find something until it popped out at you. It also happens in the physical world. I had an experience where I was wildcrafting mushrooms and I couldn't see the mushrooms until I saw all the mushrooms. So it was almost like the imagery popped for me. Things shifted and I began to look at the world in a very different way. Now when you use eidetic imagery intuitively, you notice both the macro and the micro of what's going on. The difference is you are intuitively drawn to what is important. What you may have missed if you were not paying attention to what you, your intuitive antenna was alerting you to. So you're going to see the picture, but you're going to see it a little bit differently. The third sense I want to talk about is something called veromo nasal. It's also known as noticing pheromones. Studies from several decades ago answered the question as to why we're attracted to certain people and why we're not attracted to other people. It's because of the way they smell. 
those odors are often indistinguishable to us consciously. So I would say to you, have you ever said, you know, that just doesn't smell right? You know, maybe you don't like the smell of the situation. Or perhaps there is something that bothers you about a group or a person. What if you were picking up intuitive clues veromonasally? That is a very difficult word to say, too. And what if you're using those to unconsciously make decisions? So it's not that you're being petty or judgmental. There's some real reasons behind why. So these are three of the secondary intuitive senses. What I would encourage you to do is to play with them. Notice if your intuition is giving you signs because something is near. You're being asked to reframe something that you're looking at. Or you're sensing an odor that you can't smell consciously. You may not even realize until you pay attention that you're using one of these senses. If your intuition does not pop with one of these, it doesn't mean that you're not intuitive. So stop telling yourself you're not intuitive. It means that these senses just are not as developed as one of the other 11 that we didn't talk about. So the key is to really be mindful and to pay attention with how you're getting your intuitive cues. So I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you've got questions, let me know. When you're ready for a neurosynchrony facilitation, contact me to schedule one.